Hey everyone, look who I caught up with today. It's Mark Lipinski. Hi everybody, how are you? Hi Alex. Hey, I am great. You know, this Skype thing, I feel like I'm right next door to you and it's awesome. It is such a nice way to connect other than just by telephone, isn't it? I am. Plus, I feel like so George Jetson. <laughs> this is exactly what right. I dreamed about when I was a kid. Right. Hey, so here's... No, I dream about flying. I want jetpacks. <laughs> <laughs> now, Alex, do you really think any jetpack in the world can actually lift me off the ground? <laughs> I'm settling for Skype. There you go. Hey, I want to talk about your show. Um, your show was a really different show in my book because it was more about lifestyle, how you've changed your approach to life. I mean, since you were so sick, I mean, the whole thing. And it's the whole slow stitch thing. But what everybody probably doesn't know is that day on set, you were really sick. I didn't know it. So tell us uh, about that. Right. And, you know, interestingly enough, I didn't know it either. The night before, uh, two nights before, when I first came into Denver, I had had like night sweats, but I thought it was just because it was warm. And you know, it was winter here, right. but in Denver, it was much warmer. And uh, I thought, well, maybe it's just because it's warm. And then the next night, I, it wasn't like I was waking up with a fever, but I'd wake up and I was drenched and I couldn't figure out what it is was. And I had been pushing myself pretty hard. And so when I got home, uh, I went to the doctor for these sweats. And he said, you know, it's probably just a little virus. And then I went off to Los Angeles to teach there for two days and had it. It was getting worse. When I got home, uh, I started having 104 and 105 fevers every day, sometimes twice a day, and hallucinating. One day I thought I was a turkey. <laughs> I literally thought I was a turkey. So, um, I was put in the hospital. I was in the hospital for about three months. Oh, yes. and, and I had um, something that was called the Ohio Valley disease, which is just one strain of a fungus. And we have them all over the place. I mean, you're in California, well, Southern California, Arizona, they have valley fever. There's a place in Minnesota, they have these kinds of things that I might have been carrying this fungus around in my lungs for 40, 50 years. Wow. But um, but once I had to start taking anti-rejection pills for my kidney transplant, then it was then I had no immune system to fight it off, and I got very sick. And because we don't have those kinds of things here on the on the shore, like New York, New Jersey, that we don't have that kind of stuff, they just couldn't figure out what it was, and I almost died. Um, I was like this close. I was already choosing the kind of box that I had to be in. <sighs> which was aluminum and the size of a dumpster, I'm afraid to say. Oh, <laughs> well, you had to go through a ton of different tests then. I did. I went through every part of me that was biopsy, uh, that could be biopsied, mm -hmm. was biopsied, including MRIs and all kinds of stuff. And you know what, Alex, this is really interesting because, you know, for before I came on the quilt show, I had been leading seminars in the slow stitching movement and actually um, talking about it at quilt guilds for a while um, and doing video casts and all that kind of stuff. But when I was about to get, they, they were checking my bone marrow to see whether I had cancer, which is a very, very painful, painful test where they actually kind of screw into your bone to get to the marrow and then pull some marrow out. Um, although I have to say, you know, biopsy of a kidney and a lung and, and whatever isn't so uh, great either. But this one is particularly painful. And um, I remember lying on that table with like my butt in the air, which is like so classy anyway, right? Um, <laughs> dignity, baby, dignity. There they are, right? Like drill, baby, drill. And I am, uh, and I thought, you know, I wonder with all of the BS I've been spewing about slow stitching and meditating while I quilt and, and that kind of stuff, I wonder if I could apply this sewing technique that I've been um, talking about to other areas of my life. And so I kind of got into my sewing head. And honestly, Alex, it was like a miracle. Now, if somebody told me this would happen, I would have never believed them. You know, I'm the, most, I'm the biggest skeptic in the world. But I actually, through that 20 minutes of meditation a day for the past year or so, and, and I don't, you know, I'm not like some guru. Uh, I think I told you earlier, I will never be on some mountain in Kathmandu <laughs> with like a, a, a computerized sewing machine. It's just right. not going to happen. Right, right. But... I actually was able to transport myself from that pain and from that experience and become peaceful and centered 
I felt no pain. I felt no fear. And it was it was amazing. And it was only through that 20 minutes of practice a day that by the time I was really at the end, taking my very last breaths, mm -hmm. I was doing that again. And in fact, it took away all anxiety and fear wow. of crossing to the other side. It was really a very profound, profound uh, experience. Not that I would wish it on anyone. I wish everyone had that experience. It makes the way you see life so different. It, you know, none of this stuff matters. So much, so much of what we worry about and we prattle about and we're buying and selling and we talk about our guilds and we don't like our neighbor. It's useless. It means nothing. That's all that matters is not how much people love you, how much you loved oh, and wow. what kind of service you are to the world. Other than that, nothing else really mattered. That was a huge, a huge educational experience for me. Life changing. Well, I, I mean, I've known you for a long time. We, we decided we're going to say we've known each other 20 years, but we don't know. Yeah. And, and, and you said not, and I think you're right, not. Yeah, no, but for quite a long time. And I mean, to watch you go through this whole process of your kidney, of then being in the hospital, I mean, oh, I'm telling you. It, it's been pretty wild. And you know, Alex, I have to, talking about that, I, I have to thank you guys because uh, a couple of friends, Meg Cox and Liza Pryor Lucy, who works with Kay Facet, started this, this fund for me to pay off my bills. Now, Alex, we have very good insurance, but when you're just my room alone, just my room alone for those months in the hospital was just under $500,000. So with me not being able to work, you know, and they, they started this fund, it's been uh, very helpful because, again, even with good insurance, I still owe a lot. And so what I'm doing now is double fold. You know, when, I don't know whether I talk about this on the quilt show, but part of the slow stitching movement, besides the meditation and, and kind of, you know, taking time for yourself and reflecting and doing things you love and creating your legacy, it's also getting rid of all the clutter and junk in your life that you don't need. So twofold, I am now in the process of getting rid of all of the junk that I don't need from, from my sewing room and my studio, which is packed the gills. Please and come I'm, to my house. <laughs> right. And I'm actually going to sell it. I'm going to put it on eBay and pay off my bills. And I, I think, wow, what a score. Because it's, it's stuff that I can't use that is wonderful. When are you going to do that, Mark? I'm going to start that probably in a couple of weeks, probably by uh, the beginning of July. You know, when you really do do it, let us know and we can blast it out to our folks too. That's fine. I was going to do this this uh, big yard sale because, you know, we quilters that come from every corner of the world. Um, and I could probably fill a garage or two with this stuff. But I thought it would be, you know, people, my, you know, my people, my people were complaining, <laughs> like, well, we don't get to buy it. How could we get to buy it? And I'm like, yeah. all right, fine, fine, fine. Let me just put it out there. It's not really, look, it's, I'm just appreciative for anything. It's not like I'm going to be selling pieces of fabric for $20 a piece. It's right, really right, 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 right. I get rid of it, but it can also help me pay my bills. And I want to uh, show real quickly, um, Kidney Mary, that's what you call her, your donors. Daughter mm -hmm. just got married or son? No, daughter. her daughter, her yeah. her oldest daughter, Caitlin. Like last just, weekend, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And it was a great wedding and so much fun. And they're all half-baked, which even makes it better. You know, they're not like appropriate. It was a formal wedding, but it was fun. And so as part of my gift to Caitlin, um, I designed a cross stitch piece with beads and yeah, silks and ribbon. Yeah. So here, here it is. Whoa. Uh -oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, don't you hate computers? Cause I'm from the old. Well, yeah. Cause I don't know what else is on that iPad. <laughs> I know. Listen, it will give you a, a thrill. Oh, look so at that. That's the, the pillow. Mm -hmm. Here's oh. a close up. Oh, and I have to tell you, the way I did it, now, when I designed this pillow, which I thought was interesting and so unique and so wonderful, was that I put it together loosely. I mean, it's sturdy, but I put it together loosely, so it's designed to actually come apart, uh -huh. so that that now becomes a sampler to be framed right. in the house, because yeah. who wants a damn pillow around? Well, apparently I was wrong, because she <laughs> wants a damn pillow around, and I can't get the pillow back, and so she's keeping the pillow for a while. I said, when you're ready to take... I was going to say, in five you, years, she'll, you'll be making it framed and stuff. Right. She's the, a other, new the other thing is on your Facebook, I mean, you just put it all out there. I want to talk about the 12-year quilt, because that's kind of an interesting story. Okay, well, you know, it's really funny, because I always say when I'm... when. People book me for things like this, and I think, well, I have nothing to say, which means I'll only talk for an hour and a half. Um, I, um, 
So about 12 years ago, 13 years ago, uh, my now husband, Jeff Turner, and I uh, were sitting in our living room in Fort Lee, New Jersey, when on the news came this, this kind of special broadcast that about uh, 45 minutes away from us in New York, a green, I guess he was the Green Party mayor of New Paltz, New York, was in fact marrying gay and lesbian couples as an act of civil disobedience against the law that said we were not equal. Um, and I said to Jeff, you know, we should do that. And he said, yes. And of course, immediately I thought, oh, my God, I have to get out of this relationship. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what am I doing? Yeah, you know, it's one thing to talk about. It's nothing to actually do. So um, we called and we actually got an appointment. Well, right after that, uh, Jeff and I moved out to Long Valley, New Jersey, which is a very bucolic. It's the horse country of New Jersey. So it's oh, farm nice. folk. Um, and uh, only 45 minutes from down in midtown Manhattan, but we're farm folk. And so I joined this very little guild and um, the women were so touched by the story. They each did a piece of uh, applique to make us a wedding quilt, which I thought was very touching, given that we were the first gay people they even knew. Some of them, you know, they were in their 70s and 80s. So I sent this quilt away to a well-renowned um, quilter in North Carolina, someone who had actually done a quilt for me before and does beautiful, beautiful work. And then I never heard from her again. And I had written a couple of times and I never heard from her again. And then, you know, life gets in the way. And I started the magazine, the Quilters Home magazine. And then I started, you know, I was working on other projects. And, you know, that just slipped away from my mind. And then, like in 2008, I wrote another letter. <laughs> and in 2012, I wrote another letter. And finally, I was cleaning out my stash on my Facebook. Every uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock on Facebook, I do a live hour. And so this live hour on Facebook, we were in my studio. I was having this I don't know, 4,000 people who showed up tell me what I should keep and what I should toss, which, of course, was a, a nightmare because 50% said keep and of 50% course. said not, and there was no help whatsoever. So um, don't you think I found a table runner that also came with this quilt? And I thought, you know, I wonder what happened to this. And I told the story and they're like, burn her, burn her. You know, they're getting, they're getting pitchforks. I'm like, really? It's as much my fault. I never followed up on it. So I wrote a letter. I, I went to see whether she was still alive. She was. I, she had a Facebook page. As a matter of fact, somebody told me we were actually friends. I didn't even realize we were friends on Facebook. So I'd written a couple letters and hadn't heard back. And I'd written a couple more letters and hadn't heard back. And finally, I heard back and said, your quilt will be in the mail tomorrow. That's all she said. That was it. Um, so don't you, I'm like, well, yeah, yeah. Well, a week later, the quilt yeah, didn't show up. On that one, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, it didn't show up. And then I, I, I didn't say anything. Some, and, uh, don't you think a few days after that, the quilt showed up with a beautifully written letter who said, you know, I'm so sorry, but when they sent the, she, I sent the quilt, she had called early on to say, do you mind if my daughter quilts it? Cause her daughter is also a long arm quilter, which I had no problem with. I'm like, absolutely go ahead. Well, the daughter, who was the new long armor, marked my quilt with a water-soluble marker. Well, we know how that goes. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. Well, the water-soluble marker came out when they wet my quilt. But some of these applique pieces and some of the threads ran. And the woman and her daughter were so horrified... <laughs> That they didn't know what to do. Now, you know, if it were just Mark Lipinski pre-magazine, they were <laughs> and, oh, we're sorry, here's your quilt, $300. <laughs> it's like Mark Lipinski. You know, there's still, you know, Alex Anderson is Alex Anderson before and after Alex Anderson, right? So I, so they, they, they just kind of dragged their feet and dragged their feet, and then they put it in a box, and then they forgot about it in the box. And, and, and when I would write, it would just bring up all this anxiety. Well, they sent me the quilt, and I have to tell you something. 12 years, Alex, since I sent that quilt, I got the quilt back. There's a little damage. I'm going to show it to you. There's a little damage like this. So they were freaking out because it had run. It had run. And you know what? I opened this quilt. Now, some of these ladies, I told you, were older. Some are now gone. Many are now very ill. A lot of them have moved away. And I love this quilt now more than I ever loved it. And you know what? 
I, it's a good example for me because I'm a good procrastinator and I do not like to deliver bad news. I went to a Catholic school and I had a crazy Italian mother. There's no room for imperfection. So um, I, I get it. But, you know, even though that's the way I was raised, believe it or not, I screw up 18 times a day. No. So I, would, I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> no. But why would you, like, you know, burn someone at the stake for an honest mistake, it just doesn't matter. Own up to it. I, I don't care. I love this quilt. I don't care what it looks like. I'll show it to you. Um, hold on, what's that? And so here's the thing, Mark. If you can decide if you want to get rid of the running, and if you do, just bind that thing and put it in the machine with Centripol. Right. Oh, look at I, I don't, that. I haven't bound it yet. I just got it back, what, last week, Alex? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, look, how oh. nice. Oh, yes. Oh. Look, this one moved to France. This one, she's now a very famous quilt artist who's in everything. And this was her first piece of uh, applique she's ever did, machine applique. Um, this lady is long <coughs> gone. I spoke at, I gave her eulogy. I mean, oh, so, Mark. you know, it just means the world to me. It means the world to me. And well, folks, maybe, maybe you want to keep the, maybe you want to keep it. Kind of runny, runny. I do. It's part of the legacy. Yeah. It goes back to the slow stitching movement. Yeah. It's part of who this quilt is. It's a part of who these people are. And I believe, even though it sounds mamsy pamsy, and you can like, you know, I don't know, you can report me to the NRA, but I think things happen for a reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. so I'm just thrilled to have this back. Hey, Mark, this has been so good. I hesitate to want to end this because can we just Skype again like friends? Um, well, I, I would if we were actually friends, oh, okay. but I, <laughs> well, let's just wrap this thing up, man. <laughs> no, I, 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 I would love to, you know, I adore the ground you walk on oh, well, and, you're... and, um, I, I would just love to. I, oh, let me tell you one more thing really quickly. Cause okay. you, you know, you and I work on the quilts of valor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the quilts of valor called me the other day and asked me if I would deliver a quilt, award a quilt to a veteran, um, and I said I would somewhere in New Jersey. Now, when I've done that before, it's been three hours away. Sure. Don't you think this veteran lives a walking distance from my house? I've never met him, 86 years old, and um, was a veteran of the Korean conflict, Korean War. So uh, next Saturday, I'm going to go meet my, uh, awesome. my neighbors, and I'm trying to figure out, maybe you, some of your viewers have a tip, how I can lose 30 pounds by next Saturday, because that would be a very, very helpful now thing. You get, to, now, you I, get the spanks, not the kind you brought on set, the kind with bones that come up, and yet nothing can, it can't, like, fall over and stuff hang out. <laughs> you know, Alex, there'd have to be 14 whales that wash up on the beach that would be able to give me enough bones to keep in this flap, and not to mention my man boobs. Oh, God, that's another whole uh, school of fish. And so here we wrap up this interview with what we started the team the show with. Oh, my gosh, Mark. I love you. I and love I you love too. your viewers, and thank you very much. And um, come to my... Um, Come to my eBay, and uh, I'm also going to be going, I think I'm going to sell, let me ask you this. I think I'm going to sell patterns to that pillow. What do you think? Yes. Yeah? Yes. I mean, I mean. Hey, everybody put, comment. Comment on this. Yes. Let yeah. us know. All right, good. And then also on Sunday, when do you do your thing on Facebook that's. Um... Every Sunday at 11 o'clock. I didn't do it this past Sunday because of the Orlando uh, yeah. Yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But every Sunday at 11 o'clock, and we go through my studio where I show you all the new toys people East sent Coast me. East Coast time. East, East Coast, Coast Town, okay, time. and all you go is to my, not my fan page, but my regular Mark Lipinski page, and it'll say, you know, follow me. You have to follow uh -huh. me. It'll say, Mark is now live. And then if you miss it, just look at, I usually put it on my blog, and um, I don't cool. know, I, got, like, I don't know, 6,000 people. Nice, yeah. awesome, <laughs> kind of voyeuristic. We love it. I know. So maybe I'll, if I strip, can you imagine, you know, there's <laughs> some creepy <laughs> fetish out there that would oh be interesting to a guy in a whalebone Spanx. <laughs> oh my gosh well you just have you know what i hope that everybody's not seeing what's on my computer right now do you see me yes oh because i'm looking at my granddaughter i don't know how that happened <laughs> oh gosh no i know all i see is you okay oh. okay darling will you have a wonderful rest of day god love bye, you bye alex and bye ricky and bye everybody <laughs>